And I'll tell you right now, if you don't have a lead on the 2022 Mariners by the time the starter is pulled, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. Welcome to Couch GM. Today, we're going to be talking about the Mariners 2022 bullpen, arm barn, whatever you want to call it, and why I think they're going to be a top five bullpen moving into next year. The Mariners bullpen in 2021 had a great year. They finished third in the league in saves, fourth in home runs allowed, fourth in walks allowed, fifth in whip, and eighth in ERA. Now, this does count Ken O'Graven's insane .82 ERA, his .697 whip, and his 10 saves over 33 innings. But then on the flip side, it also does count Rafael Montero's awful 2021 with uh, a 7.27 ERA over 43 innings and a 1.638 whip. And speaking of Kendall Graveman, here's a live look at that trade DePoto made at the deadline. It's number eight to Toro. He drills this! Drilled and crushed! And this is gone! Everyone was thoroughly confused when this trade happened, but the clouds are parting and we're starting to see the light. Moving into 2022, it's a good thing the Mariners are going to be able to bring back a majority of the relievers they had in 2021, but then also factor in the additions that they had late in the season with both a trade and with people coming back from injuries, and I think it takes them over the top. Starting with the early relief guys, you would think that Justice Sheffield and Justin Dunn will end up in this area as they're coming back from injuries in 2021, and with the Mariners rotation continuing to gather strength, you would think that these two guys will be pushed to the bullpen unless there's injuries in the starting rotation. Matt Brash is another interesting name here in the bullpen. He was called up from the minors in the last stretch of the season in 2021, but never actually made an appearance. He was a starting pitcher throughout the minors, but can be transitioned into a single or multiple inning guy. He'd also be another guy that can make a spot start. Johan Ramirez, Anthony Misovich, and Eric Swanson ran out this half of the bullpen. And now for the high leverage arms. And I'll tell you right now, if you don't have a lead on the 2022 Mariners by the time the starter is pulled, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. If the game's within three runs by the time the starting pitcher comes out, you're going to be seeing one of these guys. Casey Sadler had an incredible year in 2021 with a .67 ERA, a .719 whip, and 16 holds over 40 in a third innings. You could expect some regression, but he should be a solid high leverage guy. Drew Steckenrider also had an incredible year over 67 and two-thirds innings with a 2 ERA, a 1.02 whip, 14 saves, and 7 holds. He was a part of the closer committee that the Mariners had this last year. Diego Castillo was acquired from the Rays soon after Kendall Graveman was sent to the Astros. And to be honest, I'm not sure why the Rays traded Castillo. At the time he was traded, the Rays were second in the AL East and Castillo was their closer, having 14 saves so far that year. The Rays would go on to win the AL East, but then lose to the Boston Red Sox in the Divisional Series. Castillo is now arbitration eligible for the next couple years, and will become a free agent after the 2024 season. He didn't come for free, as the Mariners did give up JT Chargois and third base prospect Austin Shenton. Shenton was ranked the number 17 prospect in the Mariners system at the time of the trade, but considering the Mariners got a closer level reliever for the next three years and one with postseason experience is a big pickup. He's got a bowling ball sinker that touches 100 and a wipeout slider. If there's another closer committee this year, he'll definitely be one of those guys. Paul Seawald was another guy that had a big year for the Mariners. After being non-tendered by the New York Mets, the Mariners signed him to a minor league contract. He ended up having a career year in 2021 over 64 and two-thirds innings, pitching a 3.06 ERA, had a 1.02 whip, 11 saves, on top of 16 holds. He's under contract until after the 2024 season as well, and will hope to repeat what he did in 2021. And now on to the flamethrowing right-hander, Andres Munoz. He was originally signed by the San Diego Padres as an international free agent in July of 2015 at the age of 16. He would make his MLB debut with the Padres in 2019, after which he would have to forego the entire 2020 season due to getting Tommy John surgery. In August of 2020, Andres Munoz was a part of a seven-player deal between the San Diego Padres and the Seattle Mariners. He would remain on the injured list for most of the 2021 season before coming back to make one appearance at the end of the year. Munoz has hit 104 on the radar gun in the past and routinely sits at 100+. plus. Add in that sweeping slider... And you're looking at a guy that can lock down that closer position for years to come. Going into his age 23 season, 
The Mariners are so confident in his potential that they locked him down to a four-year contract extension, including an additional three club options, locking him down through 2028. The real question will be if he can command his pitches and manage the walks. The last guy sitting in the Mariners' bullpen is none other than Ken Giles. Giles missed most of 2020 and all of 2021 recovering from Tommy John surgery, but has been one of the best closers in baseball when he's healthy. Over the seven years he's pitched so far, he's averaged a 2.74 ERA, a 1.17 whip, and a 12.3 K per nine. He'll also bring some postseason experience as he won a World Series in 2017 with the Houston Astros. So when you take into account how good the Mariners' bullpen was in 2021, add in Diego Castillo, Andres Munoz, and Ken Giles, that's a back end of the bullpen that should be able to shut down any team in the league. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and follow the Couch GM on Twitter for more.